At first glance, it would be hard to see what Virtua Racing and the Sega Mega Drive have in common, other than they were both made by Sega, that is. But the backstory of Virtua Racing is an interesting one. Well, it's interesting to me, anyway. As far back as 1988, when Sega were just about to release the Mega Drive in Japan, they had begun development on the Model 1 board. And the reason for this was purely financial. The Mega Drive was touted as an arcade powerhouse, and so, if gamers could play arcade perfect games at home, then maybe they would stop visiting arcades. And for Sega, this would mean a huge drop in profits, as the arcade was where they still made most of their money. The Model 1 board was designed to widen the gap between home and arcade, and this is where it gets interesting for me. During those early production meetings about the Mega Drive, the idea of sprite scaling and polygon technology was put forward. Could you only imagine what that console would have been like at that time, in 1988? It would cost a fortune, obviously. But man, what a time that would have been to be a gamer. But the decision to include that technology was dropped and kept exclusively for the arcades. And this was an important decision as well, as there were arcade competitors who predated Sega in the use of 3D polygon graphics, most notably Namco and Atari games who were displaying up to 2,000 polygons per frame. So Sega increased their Model 1 system's capabilities significantly beyond that to 6,500 polygons per frame. And this is how Virtua Racing came about. Virtua Racing was initially a developer's demo of the technology, just to show what was possible, but the execs at Sega were so impressed with what they seen, that Sega developed the demo into the game we see here. The original game has three circuits, designated into difficulties. Beginner is Big Forest, Intermediate is Bay Bridge, and Expert is Acropolis. Each level has its own special feature. For example, the amusement park in Big Forest, or the Bay Bridge itself, or the tight hairpin of the Acropolis. When selecting a car, the player gets to choose between different transmission types. Virtua Racing introduced the VR view system by allowing the player to choose one of four views to play the game. This feature was then used in most other Sega arcade racing games like Daytona USA. The arcade cabinet for this seemed massive at the time, with this humongous screen, and the two player one was, well, twice the size. This size kind of meant I never really seen it much in arcades but it was more common in bowling alleys and cinema receptions. 
and it was also a very expensive game at £1 a go, one of the dearest games around at that point. Given the nature of the visuals, I did quickly compare it to hard driving and winning run, but when seeing it played, my opinion quickly changed. Very quickly indeed. Where hard driving and winning run came off as more simulatory, VR came across as a 100% balls to the wall arcade racing game. And when I played it, I felt a huge sense of relief. A relief that Polygon Gaming could be fun and could make it in the arcade world. And I got excited at what was going to be possible in the future for arcade gaming, however misplaced that was. The game lacked music for the tracks, and the sound of the car sounded more like a dying vacuum cleaner than a high-powered F1 car. But the sheer speed of this game and the incredibly smooth visuals coupled with some really precise, well, for the time, precise controls made this game a huge laugh to play. This was Sega flipping the bird to Namco and Atari and saying, take notice, this is how you use polygons in arcade games. For those younger gamers, you need to understand, this is what polygon games used to look like before texture mapping and the like. A series of prisms and trapezoids with loads of solid colouring throughout and gamers of my generation would see this and be impressed for they knew the power needed to produce these kinds of visuals. But getting back to the game, the game only had three tracks, but each one was progressively harder than the last. But the real swizz was that winning on the beginner did not advance you to the next track, so you would pay a pound for about five minutes of playing Cash grabbing Sega, bloody typical. This game just seemed to come out of the blue. I had never read about it in any magazines anywhere until I seen this in late 1992. But weirdly though, I do remember seeing it being previewed in a magazine for the Sega Mega Drive a year later. There is no way Sega would port this across to the now aging 16-bit machine, would they? Well, here is Virtua Racing on the Mega Drive. And it's, well, disappointing as one would expect. Not only that, the cartridge is, well, bigger in almost every way, including the price tag. £70 Sega wanted people to pay for this rubbish. £70! The steep price was attributed to the SVP or Sega Virtual Processor being added into the cartridge, which probably explains its freakishly roided up size as well. Sega done a valiant effort, I suppose. But it's baffling. Why create a game on a system you knew couldn't handle it? Because you designed that system not to handle these kinds of visuals. Gameplay-wise, it's not actually that bad. Sure, it's rough to look at. But as a racing game on the system, I think it plays not too bad. But there are so much better options on the system, like Road Rash and Super Monaco GP for a start. And those games were ancient by the time this came out. I'm not sure how well the cartridge did in terms of sales, but I am guessing it probably wasn't a whole hell of a lot. Not at that steep price tag. And with the Saturn and PlayStation on the horizon later that year, I think this game was done as an attempt to keep loyal Sega owners happy till the Saturn came out. Which doesn't explain why they also released it onto the 32X.
Virtua Racing! Now, this version did surprise me quite a bit. I never owned a 32X. I think along with the Mega CD, Sega were just taking the mickey out of their loyal customer base with the constant add-ons. But I did know someone who fell for all that crap. And no, he did not have a 32X either. But he does now. And when he showed me this game a few years ago, I was impressed. Having never played a 32X game up to that point, I guess it might have been the whole it's good because it's new to me kind of thing. But actually this version of Virtua Racing is good. Sega included a variety of cars to select from now, which does extend the play life of the game. And visually, it makes the 32X seem like an impressive piece of kit. As opposed to being a piece of shifting through the game's options does also help show that Sega wanted to make this game more complete than its other versions. The inclusion of the other cars and the improved speed of the game over the Mega Drive version wasn't enough however to convince people that the 32X was worth the cash. At £170 in the UK, it was only about £20 cheaper than the Mega Drive when it came out. And then the cost of the game, which I think was about £50, so over £200 to play one game, it was just a bit too steep for many gamers. Virtua Racing is one of Sega's most loved games from that era, and at the time it blew a lot of gamers' wallets apart and showed what the future of gaming, particularly racing games, would be like. Not only that, but Sega got a taste for this polygon gaming technology, and it was used in more other daring kinds of games, which for Star Wars fans in particular was heavenly. But that's a video for another time. That was my look back at Virtua Racing. If you like this video, then please do give me a sub and a thumbs up, or maybe even a comment or two below about your memories of Virtua Racing on any format. And a huge massive thank you to all of those who have subscribed to my channel and commented on my videos. Your feedback and support really does go a long way in helping the channel grow, and so it's a massive thank you from me. And that's all from me folks, thanks for watching.